So in the last episode, we made a very cool custom form. But it has a small flaw, because as we add buttons to our form, we will see that the buttons will overflow and basically go out of the box. To fix this, we are going to be using JSON UI grids, which will take the existing buttons and wrap them onto the next line. And with that, sub YouTube and welcome to the third part of the JSON UI series. If you guys want to see the full code, check the description and join my Discord server. And now, enjoy the video. To implement grids, we need to find where the buttons are even generated and stored. So I'm just gonna go to our server form, which we modified in the last episode. Inside the file, there should be an element with the button factory that generates all the buttons. We have to modify this element, because this is also the element that controls how the buttons are being displayed. As we take a closer look, we'll see that the type of the panel is a stack panel. Unlike a regular panel, a stack panel doesn't allow for elements to overlap, so they will appear either horizontally or vertically aligned. But a stack panel can only do this into one direction, which is why we will have to change the type to a grid. And of course, this wouldn't be JSONUI if we wouldn't have to change anything else. So first of all, we have to get rid of the orientation property, since it is only available for stack panels, which we do not have anymore. So now we need to change some sizes to give the grid panel a bit of space to work with. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be changing the height to 100% C. We're doing this so the grid can control the height of the element based on how many buttons there are. This allows the grid to resize vertically how much it wants to. And now we need to change the panel width to just 100%, not 100% C, just 100%. The width of the panel cannot be dynamic since the grid has to know at which point it should wrap the elements. So setting it to 100% allows the grid to use the whole panel's width to space its elements. Now we also need to give the grid some properties to tell it how to behave, one of which would be the grid dimensions. And to be honest, this doesn't really do anything. You could put any values in there, it doesn't matter. And yet, JSONUI is still forcing us to use this. There's probably a use case where this actually does something, but in this use case, it's completely useless. Now we have to reference the button that should be used as our grid item with the grid item template. We'll just put the exact same value as we did for the control name inside the factory for the grid item template. And finally, we need to tell in which direction the grid should be resizing. For that, I'm just gonna paste in the grid fill direction and the grid rescaling type as both horizontal. To finish this off, we need to tell the grid how many items it should render. We can do that with the maximum grid items property. But of course, we don't wanna give it a value every single time manually. So we're gonna use the already existing binding to write the value of the form button's length to the maximum grid items. So the maximum grid items will be the amount of buttons we have. So now let's just see how the grid looks in game. And would you look at that? The grid is gonna take up as much height as it wants for its buttons. So when you're planning on using a specific amount of buttons, you can just change the height to some value. And would you look at that, a perfect server form using grids. But how do we determine how many elements it should show per row? Because if you remember, the grid dimensions property doesn't do anything. And it's actually quite simple because it's based on the width of the form. Meaning it will try to fit as many buttons in a row as it can until it starts the next row. In this example, I just made the width a little bit smaller, so now we would have the perfect field for a tic-tac-toe game. But of course, we don't want to mess around with the height every single time. So what if we just made the element scrollable? Now scrolling panels are the single most difficult thing in JSON UI. So let's just take a look at already existing ones and copy them. So first of all, I'm just going to be navigating to the server from the JSON file from the vanilla resource pack, which you can find in the description. And inside there, you can already find a scrolling panel which we will just copy and paste into our project. Now we just need to rename a few things so it doesn't collide with the already existing one. The new scrolling panel is now actually gonna be our main panel, the panel that gets referenced first from the server form factory. So we'll just copy over its name and paste it as a child control for the long form panel. Additionally, we need to reference our grid panel inside the scrolling panel. So a scrolling panel knows which elements to scroll. We can already see that it's kinda trying to do something, 
but it's not quite there yet. That is because we need to actually set the panel that wraps around our button factory to also 100% C height, which is the height of the children. That way the scrolling panel knows how much it should scroll. And now we have an infinitely extensible scrolling grid panel. I, to be honest, I didn't think it was that easy. But there are some things that you should probably do to get a better user experience. I recommend changing the height of the form so the buttons don't get cut off. And yeah, that's actually it. That's a perfect server form. Please check out the description if you think that this video was useful. There you can find the code and other potential helpful links. And make sure to like and subscribe. And bye bye.